a fly tires. Thanks for tuning in. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit differently. I'm out here at one of my favorite streams to hit early in the season. And uh, I thought I would show you a couple of the ways that I go out and harvest fly tying material naturally and uh, tie flies just with stuff that I find out in the environment. So I've got a few things with me today. I brought some tools and a uh, hook. I can't make my own hooks out here, but um, I'm going to try and do pretty much everything else. See how it goes. All right, I'm a nice uh, part of the creek, and uh, one thing that I've been able to do in the past is just take a gold uh, panning pan and search out for a couple bead heads. So we're going to try that here. All right, so I've got my gold pan, and we're going to just take a look at some of this gravelly water here and see what we can find. So I just got a little bit of uh, material there, and I'm just going to sift that up. There you go. Look, I got a little bead head right out of the stream. Oh wow, that's amazing. I got a second one out of that. I'm gonna keep painting here for a minute. Put those ones aside to see what else we can get. Third one. Wow, this is like a, better than a gold mine, let me tell you. Unbelievable, I've got a sixth one. Alright, that looks like that's about it. Oh, we got it in there, there's a little bit of black sand left. Alright, let's go put that on our hook. Alright, that was pretty lucky to find all those beads. We got one on our hook now. I'm going to be using a Mustad... Nymph hook, this is a 3906B or the S82. I'm going to add a couple wraps of lead. I guess I forgot to mention I brought a little bit of that from home, but uh, other than that, everything else from here on in, we're going to find out in this park. Just a few wraps. We'll cinch that in under the bead and uh, let's go find some thread. All right, one of the main components of our fly is thread and I didn't bring any, but what I did bring is just an empty spool. So my plan was to just walk along the river and uh, along some of the paths where you get some of these uh, jagger bushes and stuff and uh, look for a spot where somebody maybe snagged their jacket or sweater or something. And indeed I did stumble upon something here today. So we got just a nice fine thread, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but I'm going to uh, find one of the ends here and I'm just going to wrap that onto the spool. Looks like there's a decent amount here. So as long as we have enough to tie a fly, we should be good. Looks like there's quite a bit here, so I'll continue wrapping that and then I'll take that back to the fly tying tutorial and uh, go from there. All right, I think if we got enough thread, we'll just wrap that on behind our lead and uh, try and tie over our body just a little bit just to secure the lead down just like we normally would. Hopefully we got enough length to finish our fly. One thing that I'm always looking for as I'm walking along the riverbanks are little feathers from different birds and whatnot. And uh, today I was lucky enough to find a uh, feather here. I'm not really sure what kind of feather that is, but it's going to work well for 
tail or a body for the nymph that we tie. All right, let's go put that in our fly. Well, I'm glad we found a darker colored feather. So we're just going to take a few of the fibers off the stem. And we're just going to measure those about a shank length. And we'll tie that on at the back. And we'll just make sure that we secure that along the length of the hook and then trim off those tag ends. I found if you come to one of these kind of construction boxes, you can find all sorts of little waste wires. So what I do is I just strip those out and those are perfect little copper wires. So I'm going to grab a couple of these for the fly and we'll strip them and go down and tie a fly. Alright, let's do this. Alright, I've stripped off the outer coating of the wire and we're just going to tie that in along the close side, along the entire length of the shank. So one thing that I had hoped to find today that I didn't was a piece of partridge or a, a pheasant tail, but uh, no luck on that front. So uh, I think we're going to have to find something else. So we take a little bit of this grizzly hair And uh, I'll just try and trim that off a little bit without uh, either cutting myself or making it look too funky. So, a few beard hairs. We'll wrap those in as the body. Just want to take away the uh, really shortest ones. So we got like some good length there. Just trim up the tips or the butts. And then we'll tie that in along the hook shank. And... Then we'll just take our thread up to the front and we'll just start wrapping those like they were some kind of body hair or body material, like quill or something perhaps. I don't know how these will fish, but we're going to try it out. All right, we'll clean that up a little bit. All right, now we just need to uh, kind of reinforce this. We'll just reverse wrap the wire the opposite direction of the hair and we'll tie that off right behind the bead. Clip off the excess wire. All right, we're just gonna put a coat of solar res bone dry on top of this uh, body material, this grizzly hair, if you will, and um, then we're just going to zap it with our UV light and we'll go from there. Oh, but luckily I found something I can uh, turn into some dubbing here. Sort of a mylar ice dub, if you will. So, just found a little piece of plastic. And if I cut this up fine enough, and I brought uh, my tools for uh, carding, like uh, dubbing, I'll try and put that through there and see if I can make some decent ice dub or something. Uh, there's a hawk overhead, and the uh, Robins don't like that so much. That's what all the commotion is. All right, let's take all this stuff back and uh, see if we can get a fly done. All right, I've cut this plastic into a few little pieces and I'm just gonna put it on this carding tool that I use for my uh, regular dubbing. So we're just gonna grind that together for a minute or two and then see what happens. and. Looks like we got some decent material here we can use for dubbing. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, stretched out a little bit. I think we have enough here for a collar. 
So let's see if we can put that on our fly. So we'll just twist that up like regular dubbing and looks to be working okay. And then we'll just uh, wrap a small hot spot collar onto the fly. That looks pretty good. All right. Pick away any of the excess there. And add a whip finish to this fly and we're ready to fish it. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.